What's up everyone, Super Nerd Daniel coming at you with episode 4 of my Life is Strange True Colors playthrough. In the last episode, we did a lot of sleuthing, we did a lot of LARPing, and we also did a lot of bisexual shenanigans-ing. <laughs> um, and we also, very importantly, found out a lot of info about uh, Typhon Mining and what exactly they were doing in the hours before and the days after the explosion that caused Gabe's death, because apparently... There was a second explosion, which the explosion that killed Gabe was used to cover up for something called Rhea. And Alex kind of determined that the Rhea blast was used to cover up something at the site of the uh, 2008 mine collapse. You know, the one where Jed led his team to safety. So maybe we'll get some insight as to what that is today. But before we go any further, I do need to clarify once again and give some thanks because this is a sponsored playthrough after all. So thank you to Square Enix and Rainmaker GG for providing the code for me to download this game and play for all of you here on the channel. But without further ado, let's go to episode four. It's all on this USB drive. All the evidence you need to nail Typhon for Gabe's death and plenty more. All right. Bring it with you. I'll meet you in an hour. Thanks. Talk soon. Oh, because I'm sure it'll really be that simple, right? We are live at the Spring Festival. One final reminder to head over to the Lace Flower Cart and grab a rose before they're gone. Oh, I better do that at shit. At <laughs> inaugural Spring Festival, eligible women of good stock and birthing age would offer up roses in order to attract a mate. What can I say? History is weird. Yeah, that's Thankfully, saying something. We've lost the mating stuff, but kept the roses. And if you do have a special someone in mind, a rose is a great way to say you care. And an even better way to say, hey, look, a rose. Sounds fun. Is giving away a rose something I'd do? Better question. Is giving a rose a way to say sorry decide downstairs. for smashing a sentimental item that you really gave a lot of importance to because of, you know, a deceased friend? For now, I'll grab the USB stick. Not before we check this phone. The Spring Festival has begun. First up, we have our annual chili cook-off, and later we'll have live music, a jelly bean guessing contest, and a raffle, as well as food, drink, and a bonfire. Let's kick spring off right. Nice. Dude, I would love to go to, like, a chili cook-off. Thanks, everyone, for another excellent Spring Fest chili cook-off. Oh, we missed the chili cook-off? Ah, god damn it. Killer chili, Mike. Remind me to get the recipe for the lantern. You wish. I am so full. Actually me at a chili cook-off. Huge shout out to everyone who helped out with the LARP. I think we really helped boost Ethan's spirits and I had a great time too. Oh, that's good. Is that what that was? Still banned. Wow. Kind Haven listeners, we are now live at the Spring Festival. Swing by our trailer in the park to grab some raffle tickets and maybe win some merch. Oh, nice. Oh. Something special on the main stage, you say? It's not much in the way of text this time, although I guess to be fair, this is supposed to be on the same day as episode 3, right? Yeah. Enjoy the Spring Festival. I wish I could be there, but at least I'm getting crazy good work done on the next Thanor comic. Sweet! What's happening in this issue? No spoilers! But Thanor finds a gate to the underworld and fights the King of Demons. Yo! That sounds pretty sick. Also, kind of sounds like a big spoiler. Oh, it's the first page. Yeah, I guess that's fair if it's the premise. I figured it out. There was a second blast the night of the accident. Yep, that's what I was saying at the start of the episode. Typhon's old mind was involved. They're trying to hide something. Holy shit. Steph and I want to hear everything. We're at the stage. Meet us when you're ready. Ethan. Joy. I guess I'm used to feeling like the whole world changes when I take on someone's emotions, but... What Ethan's joy did to Haven... The way it lassoed the entire town and dragged it into his fantasy? I've never experienced anything like that. I actually felt Alex dissolve, slow off, and underneath was just Alwyn. It felt good to try on a different history, to remember a different life in a different world. But then the sirens came and Haven snapped back into focus. 
I don't think Fantasy Alex could have done what I did. Ethan didn't need her. He needed me. That felt good. We can pry jewels from claws on your behalf. Or we can wear masks and stalk the streets. Are we monster? Are we mortal? Whichever you need us to be. Who, boy, this is the one I'm interested in. Charlotte. Anger. Some anger blisters like old film stock stuck in a projector. It eats you up from the inside, melts away everything else until all you are is a brittle shell and a boiling mass of blame and guilt. Make some art. Supposed to help, right? But it doesn't. Just fills your shop with reminders of what a shitty person you are. Don't know how I knew I could do it. It was like suddenly noticing an extra limb. Somehow invisible until the very moment I thought to use it. I could reach inside, find Charlotte's anger, turn it down, and then turn it off. God, it hurt so bad. For a minute, I wanted to burn the whole world down, sit down in the street and let the flames peel me away, layer by layer. Instead, I swallowed it. I had to. Charlotte suddenly just fine. Or maybe not fine, but safe, at least? For now? I keep telling myself it was the right thing to do, the, the only option I had, but... Then I remember her eyes, the way they looked at me, but didn't really see me. I'm carving you out of stone, finally learned how to need someone. Crack your coffin, penny for your thoughts, on the fucking monster I've become. See, that sort of thing was exactly what I was worried about. Because, uh, yeah, I was kind of worried that there would be some implication that Charlotte would, like... I guess become less of a person if I took her anger away. That would leave her as like some kind of blank slate. Again, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I, I don't know. I just feel like there's going to be some kind of detriment for that for Charlotte. But again, I was worried that she was going to do something real drastic if I just left her be. So I don't know, man. Happy Spring Festival, Gabe. I remember trying to pregame as a teenager and just going to sleep instead. Wow. Looks like the festival is already in full swing. I'm pretty nervous. Is it because of the crowds or is it because of Steph? Because uh, either is valid. It's very tempting to curl up with this all night instead of leaving my apartment. Oh, that's too real. Go to a big party where I know very few people and there's going to be a big crowd? Uh, no thanks. I'll take my fantasy world, please. One day I'll organize this stuff in here. Today is not that day. Bet. What are the chances your instruction manual is in here? I'm going to say low. Yeah. This one ornament will really bring my tree together. It's better than none. Ah, string lights. The key to unlocking the cozy places subreddit. Yo, know, honestly, I kind of want some string lights for my room. Like, now, unironically. I'll grab the USB stick. I'm working on it. I'm trying to get the lore. Oh. Pretty, but not very Gabe. Why does he have this? Oh, that's going to be a gift from Charlotte, isn't it? Traditionally, you give roses to your crush at the festival. Damn it. So... I've never had a girl give me flowers before. I'm sorry. I didn't know you cared so much about traditional gender roles. I'll get back to my butter churning and doilies. Shut up. <laughs> oh. Every time I learn something wholesome about those two, it just makes me more sad how things turned out for both of them, really. Don't worry. I'll come back to you. I've been meaning to tell Jed about the sink, but I'm afraid he'll try to teach me how to fix it myself. Mmm, yeah, I... Like, here's the thing, I would be afraid 
to try and do that if it's not something very simple like, oh, something's loose. Oh, something came off. I can just put it back on. If it's not something extremely simple, I am afraid I will fuck it up and flood the entire apartment. That is just how that's going to go for me. I'm about ready to start my own list. Oh, yeah, this is the, the make shit right list. Oh, that last one still. Yep, but we're not grabbing the USB stick yet. We're still perusing the old apartment. I've been playing more these past few weeks than the last few years. Feels nice. But can you play Wonderwall? That's the real question. If yes, please play Wonderwall. If no, please learn how to play Wonderwall and then play Wonderwall. Oh, a letter? Hello? The world really doesn't deserve Thanor. Alex, don't worry about me. The drive down south with my dad always makes me feel better, and we have a lot of plans for the summer. He said we could go camping and make ultra s'mores. S'mores, but with ice cream on top. Ooh! Yo! Secret family recipe. The LARP was amazing. You were a really good bard, and I hope we can do it again soon. I already have more ideas to fill out your backstory. Banshees? Thanks, Alex. Ethan. Aw. I'm glad he's doing better, you know? I really am glad he's doing better, and that he enjoyed the LARP, because that was sick. Will you be my date to the festival, Shoo Shoo? Now, the real question, what outfits do I have for episode four? Yo, Hot Dog Man! Alright, Hot Dog Man, okay, okay. Digging it, digging it. Also kind of dig the tiger. Ooh, sick. Ooh, Call back to one of Max's shirts from Life is Strange Season 1. I see I'm torn now. I love this shirt. I do love me an original game throwback. But also Hot Dog Man. Mm. The, the lipstick design is just calling to me, I think. It's just, it, it's it's working for me. I think we're going with this. Is there anything over this way? I'm assuming we can't leave it at the USB stick, obviously, so. Alwyn the Bard will ride again. At least we got to keep the hat. Hmm. Nah. I think we'll. The USB stick is on my desk. Oh, I thought I could go up to the deck. Get a nice view, maybe a moment of zen. But, uh, nope. Seems not. What I really want to know is are we going to get to play foosball again at some point? Because, obviously, according to some of the texts I saw from a previous episode, Steph and Alex were playing more foosball. Okay. Let me in on this, stay. please. Oh. I guess we should check that. Are you joining us this evening, dear? Yes, this is one party I'm willing to brave. Ha! We'll make it as painless as possible. I sure hope so. Cause, uh... Me and crowds of people I don't know? Uh, not great. Oh, this already looks nice. Ooh, I love the lighting! Test, test. Check. I love Check. the colors of the lighting out here. It's awesome. Check. Hey, Steph. Holy shit, you own a skirt? Nice hey, to see guys. you too, Steph. Hey, Happy so sorry about the bottle. Breakfast. Thanks. I need to apologize to you guys. Good start. What happened in the apartment? Something really messed me up. Mm. Well, I mean, they already know about the power, so, like, would saying I was helping Charlotte by sucking up her anger really feel that weird to them? Yeah, like, they know about, they know about the empathy power, so, like, I don't think it'd be that weird to tell them. These past few weeks, I thought I had a handle on my emotions. But after what happened with Charlotte... It's the same old story. I lose control, and I hurt the people I care about. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. Fuck that. If anyone needs to apologize, it's me. Ever since we've met, you've been there for me. And then when you're the one struggling, I bail. Yeah, but that doesn't really excuse what I did, Not though. Cool. I'm really sorry. It's totally fine. But I still owe you a new trophy. Fair. Let's play for it. Give me another foosball segment. That's all I ask of you. Moment, but Typhon blew up their own mine. Why? I don't know yet. But we have all the evidence we need to nail them for Gabe's death. I got a hold of Pike. He'll be here soon. You know, I would think you would still need to gather, stick, you know, evidence of modus operandi, i.e. why they would bury the mine. I think we've all earned the right to enjoy ourselves a little tonight. The band's coming on soon. You'd better be front and center. I mean, if you're going to be part of it. Uh, do you need help oh, setting Brad. up? Do you need help setting up for the show? Nah, it's all good. We're almost there. I have to run back to the trailer. Go be a normal person for a while. Can't make any promises. How the fuck do I be normal? Text me when it's ready. Oh god, I have to talk to people. If I wanted to give away a rose, Steph and Ryan would definitely be on my list. But specifically anyway, Steph, right? Time to enjoy the festival. Happy Spring Festival, Haven Springs community. Thanks for letting us celebrate with you. The poster has disabled replies. I, I'm not doing a goddamn thing until I secure a rose. Take one for someone special. Limited supply. Do it. Do it, coward. There's feelings attached to the drum kit. Hello? Can't wait to see this mystery band tonight. You know, that drum kit that I never once touched, even though it gave me the option in episode one. Oh, is this drugstore makeup? I wonder. Uh, the band that Steph was in? Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah, there's Izzy. Man. All right. This show rules. It's something. Anyway, I'm Izzy. That's Steph. We're drugstore makeup from Seattle. We've got... Um, merch. <laughs> Dude, count me in. I'm dying. Smooth. Smooth as fuck, Izzy. Yo, I do wonder if we get to meet Izzy during the uh, DLC story at all. I don't know when that takes place, obviously. I just know it centers around Steph. So. Doing this takes a certain type of person, and I am not that person. Oh, God. Fucking bobbing for apples. It just makes me think of the fucking Game Grumps 10 minute power hour where they tried to do bobbing for apples and the whole thing was just a disaster. How do you do this? How do you do this? It's impossible. How are you supposed to do this? This is impossible. This is one of the worst things I've ever witnessed in my life. Not just like one of the worst sporting events, but like one of the worst things I've ever seen. I was literally just about to talk to Ryan, but uh, apparently I have a text from Diane, who has no profile picture. Bit She's worrying. Bitch. Hi, Alex. Wanted to wish you a wonderful first spring festival. Unfortunately, I have to work through it this year, but I really appreciated our conversation earlier today. It was great getting to know you better. Smile. Thanks, Diane. The feeling is mutual. Smile. Oh, okay. Thank God. There's not like... It's not like an automatic thing where if I talk to him, he gets the rose. All right, so I can just speak to Ryan. That's good. Ryan's always been there for me. Should I give a rose to him? Eh. Ryan, you're a swell dude. You're handsome as fuck. You're really good under stressful situations. And keeping, uh, keeping everybody level-headed. But, uh, just not vibing I with you I'm in that way, I think. Might as well wander around and be social. I know, Alex, but we need to talk to one of the other main characters hey. first. How's it coming? Oh, good. I'd say the chances of starting a fire are low to medium low. 
Ah, oh, that sucks. Every party could use a bit of arson. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Yo, would this place have a bounce house and they don't have it inflated right now? Are you kidding me? Can I inflate this? Is there an interactable? There is not. What a ripoff. Cannot believe they have a bounce house at this festival. They're not even gonna have it up and ready to go. Give me a moment of zen in the bounce house. Oh, hello. Crap. Was I supposed to give him a hug? Does he think that I think it's not a date? If this is a date, it's a really silent one. Oh no. Oh no. Should I not have worn cologne? Is that too try hard? Maybe I didn't wear enough. Oh, look at the hang of this one day, or not. This is li Both of these people are me. Questioning everything, overanalyzing everything. I am both of these people, and I don't appreciate the two-pronged personal attack. Oh, hello? A pyramid of empties? Where there is beer, there are builders. Those embers still look fresh. Somebody was down here getting wasted by the creek. I'm sure it couldn't have been those two, festival. right? Maybe I can say hi. I'm working on it, Alex. I'm trying to explore. I can't imagine it was those two, right? The anxious couple? They don't even look wasted. They don't even look like they've taken a single drink. 233. 234. Hello? Another year, another prize no. gift card for yours truly the red to keep. One was 234. Such a little devil. Wait. Really? Come on, Jelly Bean Damn Lady. It. That's not right. <sighs> One, two, three. This game is so demoralizing. Why do I do this to myself? Me playing Smash? Maybe I can help him somehow. Hey there. Guess the exact number of jelly beans and win a prize. <laughs> Only one guess per person. The exact number? Is that how this game is supposed to work? <laughs> you can go right after this determined young man. Gotcha. Let me swing around so it's not looking weird that I'm behind the cart. Speaking to him. What's up, bro? Hi. Oh, hey. Nice to see you. You're taking this jelly bean thing very seriously. Isn't this the same guy who had the lost dog, yeah, or am I mixing him up? The prize is a $100 gift card. Yo, score? Chrissy's been all anxious ever since she got lost. Yeah, it is so, the same guy. I thought I could get her a bunch of Oh, I gotta help him out. I absolutely gotta help him out here. Saying it out loud? Not at all. That's sweet. Maybe I can help. Oh, for real? Are you good at this? How many jelly beans do you think there are? Oh god, is that actually gonna make me guess? Uh, uh, mm, mm. uh, 800? It's always more than you think it is. I'd say like 800 or so. Huh. Yeah, could be. Feels like something just changed in that lady by the jar. Oh? Maybe I should read her. 800's actually not bad. Hopefully they don't go lower. Oh, I was close? Maybe I should say something. Oh? Hey, I've got another guess. Yeah? Mm, let's keep it close to the 800. I don't want to go super low. I think it's closer to 700. Yeah. 700 feels right. But we have to get it exactly. It's Just true. that lady's heart skip a beat. Ooh. I read her again. Whoops. Yep, this lady. Gotta hold it, Daniel. They're really close to 731. Who is this girl? 731, yes. you say? It's mine. The answer is 731. Don't ask me how. Main character, trust me, I know what I'm doing. 31 jelly beans. That's. That's correct. Ha! Nerds. Yes. Thanks so much for your help. You rule. I don't know. No, That's what I do. Hey. 
I thought with that gift card, my guy. The Jelly Bean Guessing Contest has ended. Wow, that was quick. Congratulations to our winner, Hector. Thank you, thank you. Hold the applause. Crap, I thought it was going until midnight. Normally, yes, but we had a perfect guess. <laughs> no way, someone actually won it this time? Yeah, I'm surprised. It's been, what, four years? I think five. Yeah, good thing a main character hasn't come to this place in that long, huh? Right now, since Alex keeps wanting me to talk to Jed, I'm assuming he's the main thing. that I heard the call. He deserves that much, at least. Oh, is Mac also here? Alright, well, I assume talking to Jed is, like, the main person, or, like, maybe I just have to speak to everyone, and I'll consider it exploring the festival, yada yada. So, um, we're gonna save Jed for last. But for now... Hey, Steph. How's it going? Steph is just awesome. Maybe I could give a rose to her. Hey, Steph. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if there's some way I could get your attention. Go for it. Go for it. You know this you're into it, Steph. For you. We got the connection. We got the Are vibe. You serious? Yeah. Yes, I am. A hundred percent. Dude, thank you so much. Yes. This totally makes my night. I'm glad. I am hey, unreasonably happy about this right now. After the show tonight, I actually have some pretty big news to share. She said mysteriously. Oh? <laughs> of course. Your undying love and devotion, perhaps? Because, you know, I, I wouldn't exactly be upset about that. <laughs> See you in a bit, Steph. I am so happy that worked out. I, I, man, I really thought I blew it with the whole bottle thing, I but... I tell Mac that I heard the call. Shut up! I'm you trying... That much, at least. I'm trying to enjoy the gay romance, all right? Mac can fucking wait. I'm really, I'm really glad we got to give Steph the rose, and it looks like it's gonna be, it's gonna be real good between them because I really wanted that to work out. Cause I thought I blew it. You guys can go back and watch the end of episode three before I did all the sleuthing in the files. I thought I blew it, and I was kind of upset, but it looks like that's not the case. So the world's most unnecessary vodka delivery system. Yo, if I had an ice luge to give me booze, I may be more inclined to drink booze. Like, I, I wouldn't even call myself a social drinker. I don't even drink when I go out with people. But then again, I guess that kind of assumes that I go out with people at all. But, you know. So then, where's the after party this year? Up. Oh. After party? Come on. Young man like yourself, you must know what the haps is. The Haps. Honestly, I'm getting pretty bushed. Thinking of calling it a night soon. My goodness. What is this town coming to? Oh, Eleanor. To that the spring festival wasn't complete till everyone was either asleep in the park or in someone else's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been pretty wild back in your day. My day? I'm talking about last year. <laughs> nice. Eleanor fucking rules, dude. I just hope Riley is doing all right. Oh no. What happened to Riley? Um, hello? I'm really hoping that it's just that she went to college. I'm really hoping it's that she just went to college. Hi, Eleanor. Good evening, dear. All right, so we're gonna save the Riley dialogue for last, just in case that's sad. I hope it's not. Decorations really turned out beautifully. It must have been a huge amount of work. It's worth it. Well, you really did put a lot of work into this. It looks fucking gorgeous. So, we doing shots tonight or what? Of course. Body shots. <laughs> Who's going first? Just kidding. 
Jeez. Or am I? <laughs> wow, Eleanor. Wow. Oh boy, time to maybe get sad. Hey, so where's Riley? I haven't seen her around. Well, she's got a lot going on right now. I think she'd rather keep to herself tonight. Oh boy. Okay. That was odd. I wonder if there's something she's not telling me. Perhaps it's time for a follow-up read? Yeah, Eleanor, I better get going. Back into this... Oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> Everything's set. Meet me at the stage. On my way, Steph. Nice. And what's at my block? Oh, there's a couple of things. It is live music time, Kind Haven listeners. Start making your way over to the stage and make sure you get a good spot. Hell yeah. Now, what is I up with Riley? I feeling sentimental tonight. But I haven't seen her around. Where is she? Very good question. I just wanted to take a second to say how wonderful Haven really is. Nights like this always remind me of how lucky I am to call this place home. No other place will ever come close. Ooh, she might be getting cold feet about going to college. Just because she's so... She feels so at home in Haven. And also the stuff with, you know, Eleanor and her dementia and, you know, whether she's going to need to help her out with that. And, oh my god, this is the episode. I was afraid of this. I was afraid of this. This is when they're going to make us tell Riley whether to go to college or stay. Knowing what we know. And knowing that she doesn't know about Eleanor's dementia. Fuck. Not looking forward to that. There's no graceful way to sample everything on this table. Is there? Eh, most likely not. I love that the radio station broadcasts live from the park. Right? Oh, here we or go. No marshmallows? Come on. Here's where I get a moment of zen, probably. So, listen to anything good lately? Honey, you should ask. You remember that song, Alabaster Daydreams? Uh, early 2000s? Maybe? Anyway, the weirdest thing happened today. I was in the lantern, studying, and I was thinking about the lyrics and wishing it would come on, and then it totally did. Huh, what are the chances? Right? Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? About the vibrations we emit into the ether. You know, psychic waves and whatnot. Could be. Karmic energy is no joke. Hey, so, uh, that was me. I'm the main character. How you doing? This is awesome. Favorite time of the year, by far. That kind of enthusiasm is infectious. Especially for me. Really glad to see she's doing well, you know? Yo! Hey, Valkyrie. The Black oh, Beast. They even looped you into participating, huh? The Black Beast of P. Oddly's Traveling Circus. Oddly's Traveling Circus and its crown jewel, the Black Beast, toured the United States in the 1930s and early 1940s, before P. Oddly's untimely demise here in Haven Springs, Colorado. This ill-fated performance lingered in Haven's history for decades after, and whispers of the Beast remain even today. The crown jewel of Oddly's Traveling Circus was known as the Black Beast, likely a likely a melanistic color, melanistic color variant, Fucking what are words? Of pan of Panthera, Panthera, something like that. Panthera or on I'm sorry. <laughs> of Panthera Anka. Witness accounts, however, defy the traditional understanding of the species, given its unusually large size and unnatural longevity. The Black Beast was scheduled to appear at a show in Haven Springs on July 27, 1944. That night, an incident during the performance allowed the Black Beast to escape into the mountain wilds, killing several performers in the process. Nowadays, hikers, hunters, and the adventurous at heart still report sightings of a large shadow stalking the mountainsides of Haven Springs. Presented by the Haven Springs Historical Preservation Society. Yo, fresh graffiti? Sweet, but I think I'll avoid touching this bench. Just to be safe. 
Lauren and Shane, Spring Fest 2019. Yeah, not too sure how I feel about bench sex, to be honest. Seems like a really surefire way to get splinters in places you do not want them. This is that whole communal gathering thing everyone's always going on about. Yep, I get it. The wheels on the bus, they go around and around. The autumn leaves, they keep falling down. This seems like a really chill place to just hang out, honestly. Like this, this kind of little festival, with uh, just the lights and the lighting and the flowers and everything. Uh, it just seems so chill, dude. I wish we had something like that around here. Like, yeah, there's some street dances, but it's not, it's not nearly as cool as this. Honestly. I really do wish we had something like this around here. Like, to this level, you know? Maybe I'd actually hang out with people more. Who knows? Oh, hello, Mac. I haven't seen Mac in a while. He seems no better off than before. Also gonna guess he's drunk. I heard the call. And I wanted to thank you. I know you tried to do the right thing. Even if you were being kind of a dick about it, you still did try to do the right thing. What now? I'm taking Typhon down. The whole hornet's nest. I've got one whole USB stick full of damning evidence. I'm not betting against you. But in the meantime, they're the only ones cutting checks in town. And I still got plenty of bills to pay. Hey, listen, man, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. I don't blame you. I guess I can't blame you. Money's money. Just Keep your guard up, okay? It's always flattering to see how much you care about me. Yeah, maybe not read into that too much, no bud. Try to break up me and Riley. Ugh. Uh, excuse you? I know. <laughs> no. Hey, you keep your distance there, pal. Take it easy, dude. Yeah, yeah I'd say arm's length, but, uh, no, I'm gonna need about six arm's length between you and I, pal. Oh hey, it's the writer boyfriend. What's up? This young farm maid in the elvish countryside sets out to find her missing sister, who was abducted years ago by a guild of warlocks. Okay. Go on. Along the way, she picks up mercenaries, the kind she never expected to be friends with. Elf criminal, undead priest. Oh. They find the sister. The sister is now the high warlock of the guild. She's Ooh. threatening the entire kingdom with her magical shit. And they gotta take her out. Right? I, I don't know. But what a dilemma. Fucking Shakespeare meets Tolkien. This is what I always should have been writing. Jesse, this is amazing. It sounds like your muse is finally back. Didn't need a muse. Just needed to get out of my own head long enough to remember who I am. Oh, there's some advice I needed. Fuck me. Thank you, Steph. Thanks for helping me find the fun again. Sounds like Ethan wasn't the only one inspired by the LARP today. I almost wonder if this wouldn't have happened had I not successfully solved the riddle during the LARP. Well, in either case, I'm glad to see he's, you know, finding his creative footing again. That's pretty cool. Can I talk to these people down here? I'm not sure. They don't seem to be accessible. Oh, wait. Wait. Maybe if I go around the rock? Looks like plenty of people are still out around town. Well, we gave it a shot. Oh, stop, Mr. Doom and Gloom over here. We're not out of the ice cream game yet. No. Hey, 
Hey, I take res responsibility. If we gotta shut down the shop, I want you to know that I... Seriously, no more of this, okay? Whatever happens won't happen until after tonight. For now, let's just have another drink and take a break from freaking out about the shop. You're really smart. Duh. That's why you married me? Oh, looks like YouTube been hitting the rum raisin a little hard there tonight, huh? Couldn't hack it in the ice cream biz after all. But at least we gave it a shot. Sounds like they've reached the end of their rocky road. I'm the worst. But um Also, um, yet more evidence that Alex is just me. <laughs> oh, I love and hate that. So apparently we can just waltz into the Black Lantern while everyone's at the party? Interesting. Mayhaps we will find some pertinent info that will be better suited to later in this episode or maybe in episode five, question mark? Or maybe it'll just be Ducky getting drunk, who knows? We'll see. Sounds like Ryan is ready for me. I should head outside. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could peruse around the bar for a little bit and see what's going on. I love this oversized iPod. It's really what it is, isn't it? Like, jukeboxes are really just giant iPods from the past. I would love a jukebox. Just, like, in my room. <laughs> it was so fun watching Jed play the villain. What a good sport. Yeah, about that. Um, you know, I did have this suspicion a little bit, um, towards the end of episode three, about Jed having, you know, been the surprise twist villain who was, you know, pretending to be the trustworthy authority figure in the LARP, and maybe that being some kind of foreshadowing about him being some kind of surprise villain in the actual narrative, which I hope is not the case, obviously, because I like Jed and he's cool, but, you know... This wouldn't be the first time that a trustworthy figure in the Life of Strange games has turned out to be a piece of shit. And there's also the fact, there's also the fact that uh, Jed just happens to be on the town council and is the head of the town council, in fact, uh, according to Diane's dossiers on everybody. And also, Ryan said he's ready for me now. I'm aware of that, Alex, but I am trying to deduce and not only is Jed the head of the town council, but he apparently goes on Typhon's side with all the votes. So uh, apparently his vote is all but secured in the vote to sell land to Typhon for the purposes of mining. So I don't know if he's involved somehow, especially because, again, the second blast that killed Gabe was just to cover up a first blast that buried something at the 2008 mine collapse site where Jed led his team to safety. Who knows? Let's look at this bourbon. Jed bought this as a treat for the regulars. And himself, I'm guessing. You know, I have never had whiskey in my life. At least not that I can recall. I know I've had, like, rum and cokes. I've had vodka, schnapps, a few different kinds of beer. Whatever, you know, Mike's Hard Lemonade Black Cherry qualifies as. But never bourbon, though. Don't know if I'm too gung-ho to try it anytime soon. Well played, kitchen staff. Plain hamburger. Come be some slack. Spring fest tonight. You know what? Fair. Fair. Odds are pretty good. I'm grabbing a cup later tonight. Don't know if that's a good idea. Um, A stimulant is probably not a good idea to have at the same time as you're potentially having booze, which is a depressant. Uh, would not recommend mixing the two, Alex. What about acute emotional kleptomania? Let's see, what is this? Dr. Lathrop's Tonic. Excellent treatment for snake bites, ticks and fleas, wounds, mental disorders, blebs, senility, and ablutophobia. What on earth is ablutophobia? I need to look this up. Hang on. Ablutophobia. According to Healthline, ablutophobia is the overwhelming fear of bathing, cleaning, or washing. 
Interesting. Now see, who says that Life is Strange is an educational content? Why are there dirty dishes on here? Why did no one clear their table before their shift ended? Seriously, why did no one clean this table? Uh, not tonight. Oh, come on. You can't just leave that there. Especially not with leftover food. You know, ask them for some to-go boxes so they have something to take the food home with. And then you take the dishes. And even if you don't want to clean them right away, you put them in a sink full of hot, soapy water. And you at least let them soak. You know? Water will break shit down overnight. While you break shit down. Eleanor is like a mafia boss. Except instead of crime... She spreads flowers. You know, I was trying to think of a mafia joke or like a godfather joke, but uh, the only thing that's coming to mind is I'm going to give you a bouquet that you can't refuse. And I know that's just not funny at all, so we're just going to breeze right past that. But okay, seriously though. Seriously? Seriously, you're just we're just not going to clear this table? There's not going to be a prompt? Did I suddenly develop a blutophobia? In the last few hours? Because the first thing we did in episode 3 was clear dishes from tables in the bar. I'm just saying. Oh, hello? Polaroid? Looks like a fun night. Max Caulfield? Were you in Haven Springs? Or am I just reaching? I'm probably just reaching. Come on, son. Get it over with. <laughs> I, I don't want to get sick. You're gonna feel a whole lot better after you do. Yeah. I'm gonna die, Dad. Not tonight, you're not, birthday boy. Oof. Although I suspect you're gonna wish you had tomorrow morning. Ugh. <coughs> boy. Gross. Looks like somebody overdid it on their 21st birthday. Oh, hey, Ducky. How you doing? You know, I was kind of disappointed that I saw Ducky only after the fact when I sat down with Diane in episode three and didn't get a chance to talk to him. So I'm wondering why he is also here tonight. Perhaps I should read his feelings to find out. It's not the same without you, Tabitha. Oh. Never was. Oh. Never will be. Tabitha. Sounds like Ducky's got a story to tell. You know, this is interesting because Diane's dossiers on everybody on the town council also indicates that Ducky had an estranged daughter and a deceased wife. So, uh, oh, wait, you know what? I just thought of something. Shit. You know the, 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 the bar stool over here with uh, RM and TB on it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, the RM heart TB stool. Maybe TB is Tabitha something. And perhaps she is the deceased wife. And perhaps Ducky is in his feelings. I better go outside and talk to Ryan. Uh, no, we're not doing that yet because we got to help Ducky deal with his grief, I guess, apparently. Hey, Ducky. Who's Tabitha? Oh, that's a sore spot. Do you want to talk about her? You know, Alex... On this particular matter, I don't have much to say. You know, that's fair. Okay. That's totally fair, but um, I'm kind of the main character with There's empath powers, so I, can do for Ducky. I kind of can't just let it go, sadly. I keep forgetting that when it gives me the prompt like that right away, I don't have to hold L2. It'll just let me do it if I hold X. You know, to think I could have missed this whole thing if I had just gone to talk to Ryan and not thought, hey, why don't I just walk around literally the entire town for no reason? Right? That's what you get when you come to my playthroughs and I feel the incessant need to explore fucking everything. You get stuff you might have missed. Also, why is the bear glowing? Okay. Tell me what I need to know to help him. Hey, Mr. Bear, tell me your secrets. You know, I carved that myself. Oh, hi, I'm Reginald McAllister III. My friends call me Ducky. <laughs> Tabitha Baker. Call me Tabs. 
Aww. Alright, number one, the fact that he carved a bear out of wood is metal as fuck. And two, the fact that he then used that as a means to introduce himself to a cute girl he was talking to. That is rad. I can't carve for shit. You think I can carve a fucking wooden bear? Hell no. That's impressive. Wait, wait, don't drink it. Look at the bottom. What? Uh, hello? What are you? Uh, oh, is this how he proposed? It's beautiful. Tabitha Baker. Yo! Will you marry me? Aw. You know, that's an oldie but a goodie. Although it is a good thing that he pointed out the ring and the drink first, because uh, I imagine that would have been pretty hazardous. Would have been slightly less romantic if he had to propose as they were removing the ring from her esophagus in the ICU. I'm just saying. Happy anniversary, love. Here's to another 30 years. And another 30 festivals, if we can make it. Ducky. You're going to outlast this whole damn town. Ah. They seem sweet. I know that song. Oh wait, was this the there was like a little bit of a song that was Poor Ducky. Maybe there's something I can do. There was a little bit of a song that was playing when his like aura first came up after I mentioned Tabitha. So maybe this is the song. But I think I get the gist. He met her Thanks to his wood carving skills, they got married. At some point after their thirtieth anniversary, she passed away, and he's here at the bar instead of enjoying the festivities because the spring festival just reminds him of something that they used to do together and enjoy a lot. And now he's sad, which is rough. It's a tough night for you, isn't it? The spring fest. That's right. Ooh, I'm assuming these are... Yeah, I'm assuming this is one of those you-have-to-pick-them-all-anyway thing. So, uh, I guess we're, we're already on the thought line of the Spring Festival, so let's just start with that. The Spring Festival must have been important to you two. Indeed. We were married at the festival. Oh, for real? We both loved it so much. That sounds romantic as fuck. Did you actually carve that wooden bear? Brana? <laughs> sure did. That was a long time ago. Give me one sec. Oh, could I have... Oh, should I have done Tabitha first? Shit. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Because she was paying special attention to the fact that there was a song. Main character intuition. Let's dance. Oh, this is sweet. Hopefully, it's a little less awkward than the fucking ballroom scene from Final Fantasy VIII, where Squall just kept stepping on Renoa's toes because he didn't know how to dance. Made a pretty miraculous recovery and hit a big finish, though. If only it worked that way in real life. For me, it was just the first half, not not the second half. I cannot dance for shit. It is with all the grace and coordination of a wounded polar bear. But it's honestly really nice for kind of giving Ducky this moment to reminisce. On like a positive memory for Tabitha. You know I kind of love that. You reminds me most of her right now? It's not the song or the festival. It's that you took the time to care about a sad old man for no other reason than to make the world a little less troublesome. That was Tabs. Yeah, well, you know, I do what I do. Thank you, Alex. I think I'm a little more inclined to join the others outside. 
Oh, hell You're yeah. You're welcome. Enjoy the festival. Hell yeah, dude. Enjoy yourself. Have a sweet party for Tabitha. See what else is going on in the town. Up. Oh, hang on. Mandatory night off? I'll take it. Attention! The Black Lantern will be closed on Saturday, May 25th, starting at 3 p.m. for the annual Spring Festival. Service will resume on Monday, May 27th. Ah, I see. Because they want to give us Sunday off to recover from hangovers. Uh, you know, from, from how hard we were partying. And, you know, nothing else. Up. Oh, hello. Grand opening tomorrow. Free soup and salad for spring festival attendees. Yo, for Gotta real? my shit together for this grand Just opening. Come These people yourself. won't be so gracious forever. We might. Free food goes a long way in Haven. Hey, listen, man. I'm all I'm saying, free chicken strips and free fries. Just saying. That will people will come in droves. <laughs> Or at least I will. I'll take a coupon. No coupons, my dear. Just tell me your name and I'll remember it. Alex Chen, right. main character. Alex Chen. Alex Chen. Didn't we speak already tonight? Nope. Stupid. So stupid. Print some coupons, they said. It's a small town. I'll remember, I said. Oh, hubris. You know, you could try posting on my block. Whoever comments gets the deal. Oh. Well, that's a good idea. Hell yeah, that's dude. Make use of that social media. It's the way of the future. Hope your diner works out, dude. The oh, hello? A lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Do you think there's food left at the festival? Yeah, there's still stuff at the spread. Are you hungry? I thought you might be. I... Could be. But are you? Just go to the Not festival. Really. But oh my god. You? Right. Cool. God, I still like her so much. What do I do? Sorry, man. Forbidden love is a bitch. Forbidden love, you say? Oh, hang on. I'm head over heels for this dork. What do I do? Wait, they're both into each other? Come on, people. Just kiss already. Hey, um... I just wanted to say, you two make a really cute couple. Uh, oh! <laughs> Thanks, Alex. That's really sweet. That idea doesn't bother you? No, Us it doesn't. A couple? Yeah. I... Kind of like it. Go for it. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. So. Uh, bring it home. Does this stick the landing? Do you want to um go out sometime? Yes. But just the two of us? Yes. An actual date, <laughs> devoid of pottery or third wheels. Okay. Okay. Great. Nice. Alex Chen. Professional matchmaker. Even Steph's signs are badass. Okay, now I'm crushing on a sign. Easy, Alex. I mean, you already gave her the rose. The secret's out. I mean, <laughs> closed. If you need music, come watch me at the festival tonight. Steph. Yeah, when you give someone a rose, I think I think the time for trying to suppress your crush, it, it, it kind of goes out the window. Like, she kind of knows Hun, like, it's not a secret. I have a surprise for you. Oh, hello. Good surprise or bad surprise? I started a farm in Moondrop Ranch. Get out! I'm romancing Melody. The nurse? She's adorable! I'll be real with you right now. The game is sick. I love you. I didn't expect that him playing my favorite game would be a turn on, but here we are. Well, I was trying to think of a spicy Stardew Valley joke, but uh, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I 
Let's see what's going on out here. Oh, wait, wait. Hot Dog Man sticker, hello? Alex, come on. It's Hot Dog Man. How are you not gonna be into Hot Dog Man? Wow, I sound like a total dork. Up, oh, wait. Is this Riley? Yep, I recognize the... I recognize the hair. That's Riley. Hey, Rye. How's it going? Here I am. Just waiting at the bus stop. About to change my entire life. I've been there. Oh, boy. This is not what I wanted. I really, really think this is where she's going to ask me whether or not she should actually leave. Okay. Hey, Riley. Oh, hi, Alex. And I'm really afraid to make here? that decision for Just her. Out for a walk. You? My bus comes tonight, and I just couldn't bear saying goodbye to everyone. Aw. I get that. Oh my god, you're I'm getting really cold feet, aren't you? Town. I'll miss my Nana most of all, of course. <laughs> Naturally. I hope Nana's okay. She's in good health, but sometimes I wonder if I should really be leaving her here alone. Oh boy, here it comes. Eleanor is keeping her condition a secret. But I feel like Riley would want to know. What should I do? Oh, fuck off. Man. I was afraid of this. I was really afraid of this. Okay, like... Like, at a certain point, I feel like Riley's going to find out on her own eventually. And if, on, on the one hand, right, if I'm the only one, presumably, outside of Eleanor herself, if I'm the only one outside of Eleanor herself who actually knows about the Alzheimer's, and no one else would be like, oh, hey, Alex Chen totally knew but didn't tell you, lol. I mean, there'd be no reason for Riley to really get upset with me about it. So, I wouldn't be losing, you know, that friendship. I guess, which is... Which is something, and... You know... Obviously... You know, I wouldn't want Eleanor to fucking be, you know, upset with me for spilling the beans, but then, like... If Riley doesn't know about Eleanor's Alzheimer's, then she goes off to college. And then, you know, Eleanor starts, you know, like, getting worse in that regard, and that becomes more prominent. And then what if something really bad happens? You know? I don't know, man. <sighs> But then there's also the whole, there was also the whole thing about of just like how hard Riley has worked to be able to go to college for civil engineering. And, you know, the other possible major she was talking about back in the flower shop in the last episode. And also how hard Eleanor raised or how hard Eleanor worked to raise Riley to give her this opportunity, you know? So that she can make something of her life. And also, there's the fucking whole thing of Mac apparently still kind of being all over Riley's shit. And, you know, me not wanting Riley to have to deal with that. Because she is still in town and whatnot. Ugh. Man, this is so fucking rough. I feel like either decision could be wrong. I feel like either I feel like either decision could be wrong here, which is how this game fucking works. You make a choice and then you hate yourself either way. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. You know the way I'm kind of leaning right now, personally. I like 
I almost kind of feel like Riley would want to know because she cares about her grandma so much. She loves her so much and she's obviously worried as we've just heard and also before and Riley kind of knew one day she was going to have to take care of Eleanor, you know? And also, I feel like if she has if she has the credentials to get in and all that, like she, you know, was accepted and whatnot, I feel like college is always going to be there. But Eleanor won't. And you really... You really don't want to miss out on the opportunity to, you know, talk to your loved ones before they leave you. Which is, uh, something that kind of hits a sore spot with me. Suffice it to say. I'm sorry, Eleanor. Riley, I think there's something you should know. It's kind of a long story, but I found out that Eleanor has Alzheimer's. I'm sorry. I know it's a lot to take in. <laughs> I had my suspicions, but... I, I need to go home and talk to Nana about this. Thank you so much, Alex. I'm sure it wasn't easy to tell me this. Sure. Good luck. It's still not going to be as hard as the talk you and Eleanor are probably going to have to have about this now. Mm, I feel like I did the right thing there, but I still feel like I fucked up somehow. Which, again, is pretty apropos for this fucking game. Main Street closed for Spring Festival. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. Wanted to see if there was anything interesting over there. Oh, well. Then I guess it's back to the park. Couldn't have said it better myself. Hey. At least somebody else around here is on the fuck type in train. Oh, hey, Ducky's here. Nice. He's talking to the new miner. I'm glad Ducky joined the festivities. Hey, Ducky. How are you feeling? Splendid. Thanks to you. Go have some fun. You've earned it. I tried to lose any more whiskey in somebody's couch, all right? It happened last year. Yep. I remember it clear as day. Probably around 10 or 11 p.m. And he was already drunk as... Oh, is this about Ryan? And I'm not advocating for that kind of drinking, mind you. Despite my occupation, Spring Fest is different from the Lantern. We all agree. True. But anyway, he comes racing out of the diner, bowled over a couple of tables along the way. I see him hauling ass toward the dock, and I get on after him, because I know what he's aiming for. And sure as hell, this son of a bitch jumps right off the end of the dock and into the Oh, maybe this is about something else entirely. What the fuck? Belly flop. And the poor bastard is so drunk, he forgot he doesn't know how to swim. So I jump in there after him. Took a minute, but I dragged his ass back to dry land, and we called him an ambulance just to be sure. He was fine, though. So then, I gotta spend the rest of the night soaking wet, which doesn't bother me none, but everybody keeps offering me a bunch of goddamn towels. Next morning, he shows up at my door with a box of chocolates. Chocolates! God knows why he thought that was the right token of gratitude. Why should he have brought you a rose? But, in all fairness, I ate the whole damn box. Best I ever had. Fascinating story. Also, I'm pretty sure that was not about Ryan. Um, what's up, bro? Typhon is not normal. I made a mistake coming here. Get out while you can, dude. Time to sync up with Ryan before the show. 
Yeah, before I do that... It's nice to see Jed so in his element. It's been a hell of a month. But this makes it all worthwhile. Jed loves this town so much. It's inspiring. Man, I really hope Jed doesn't turn out to be like some kind of surprise twist villain or some shit. I really hope I'm really overreaching with my interpretation of him being Storm Rider in the LARP. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, before we do this, hang on. Attention Haven Springs, happy spring festival, and thank you for welcoming me into your community. Oh, is this the diner guy? Okay. To celebrate our forthcoming grand reopening, the Brown Bear Diner is offering free soup and salad to Haven Springs residents who comment below. Let me get in on that. Nice, I'm in. Me. I would, I would like to have a free soup and a free salad. What a good idea, and I'll take you up on that. Yo, hey, oh, pff, everyone's fucking getting in on it. Looks like a successful promotion, Jack. Whenever you decide to swing by the lantern, drinks are on me. Well, thank you, Jeb, that's very kind. And Jack was never heard from again. Knock it off with that malarkey. I'm being perfectly pleasant. <laughs> hey. All right, what's up, Ryan? Just in time. So, who's playing? Yours truly. Hey. Seriously? Nice. That's awesome. Well, wait. Who else? Oh, no. Oh, no. Steph. Oh, my God. It's the Tempest in before the storm all over again. Who else is playing? Oh, no. I hate you both. They even did the same I'm smash cut. I fucking out. love it. <laughs> They even did the same smash cut. Oh, that's incredible. That's so cool. I love that. I love that callback. Okay. Um. Hopefully I didn't have to actually memorize something that I completely missed. Who said anything about missing out? Nobody. But only because we didn't give you the opportunity. This is going to be awesome. Trust me. Okay, I'm putting all my confidence in you, Steph. Um, we've never played together before, and, uh, anyway, sorry if this sucks. Hey, we're Alex and Steph. We're here to make you think about death and stuff. Fuck it. Hey! What a tune. I mean, this is gonna be third party claimed like a motherfucker, but hey, worth it. <laughs> Hey, even Jed's into it. Loving this debut from Drugstore Makeup 2.0. You know, also, it's funny because my shirt ends up actually kind of looking like the Drugstore Makeup logo from that one button on the roof. That was sick. Love that little bit. I fucking love this. It was so fucking cool. That was so fucking cool, dude. You just know there'd be that one asshole in the back going, Hey, play Freebird! Oh, boy. Hey, Charlotte. Hopefully you're not an emotionless shell now. Hey, Charlotte. What's up? 
How deep do you think? The lake, I mean. Right, I'm going to need you to get off that train of thought right now. Maybe take know. about 20 steps backward. I felt horrible this afternoon. I didn't know if I could survive that feeling. But now... It's like when your leg falls asleep. And even though it's still attached... Oh. It's become something other than you. Oh, I don't like where this is going. My whole life, I've always felt so deeply. But maybe this is better. Ooh. Okay, is there some way I can give this back to you? Oh, I hope this isn't a big choice. But this feels like a big choice. I don't want to say this might be good. That, that, just, that just makes it sound like I feel like it's a good thing that I, like, yo, know, silly strawed your anger away and then fucking left you a blob. Like, ugh. But see, it's like, I, I didn't know what was going to happen if I just left her alone in the art studio, man. Like, I thought for sure... She was going to, like, throw herself off a cliff or something. Like, that seemed likely, right? I'm not I'm not crazy when I think to say that it seemed likely she was going to do something drastic if I just left her there, knowing what I knew, knowing how she felt, and how intense her anger was in that moment. Oh, but this isn't much better. You see what I mean? I was saying this earlier. This game has such a profound fucking way of giving you two choices, and then no matter what you pick, you're wrong. <laughs> Ugh. I'm I'm just sorry. Charlotte, I'm so sorry. Sorry for what? I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Mm. Me neither. Please just go back to your studio to where you're well. safe. Have fun at the festival. Just go back to your studio where you're safe and just, you know, maybe try to chill out. Like, it's already pretty chill, but like... I mean, I guess we get to have a moment with Steph. That's, I mean, that's cool. I'm really worried about how that Charlotte thing could have gone. I'm hoping I may, I, I don't even know if I hope I made the right choice anymore. I don't know with this fucking game. Sounds like Steph wants to meet me on the rooftop. Okay, I gotta admit, this is a pretty great feeling. Yo, that's a shot. That was something else. Steph, Alex, bravo. Wow, wow, wow. Thanks, guys. We had a blast. Totally starstruck. Thanks. Uh, we have merch on the side table over there next to our debut album. You know, our, our totally professional debut album that I totally didn't just burn onto a blank disc 12 hours before the performance. With cover art that totally wasn't just drawn by me in, you know, Photoshop. Totally professional. I'm just gonna have a look around the festival, just to Back see to if. Party. But I should get to the rooftop eventually. Fair point. We are gonna get there eventually. I just want to see if there's anything else going on. That is of interest. It's been a hell of a month, but this makes it all worthwhile. Once again, fair assessment. That was one hell of a performance. Thank you, Thanks. thank you. Oh, I thought you had more to say. Oh, well. You enjoying the party, Ducky? Absolutely. <laughs> With a performance like that, how could I not? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, see, you know, I'm oh. no stranger to the mandolin, if you're ever oh? looking for backup. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, that'd be kind of sick, actually. I'm just saying, punk rock could use more mandolins. 
That's all I'm saying. Dare I ask Mac what he thought? I think I dare? Up, oh, never mind. He's got nothing to say. Good. Let's keep it that way. The real question is, is Ryan around? Surprise. Time to head up to the rooftop. I'm getting there, Alex. I just want to make sure there's no secret post-performance dialogue. Oh, hello? Eesh. This thing has seen a few spring festivals. Oh, that is a dent. Hey, uh, hey, hello, everybody. Can I have your attention? Jed, what are you doing? I just wanted to take this opportunity to say, right here, in front of God and everyone, oh? that Annette oh? Teresa Foster is just the most beautiful woman in the world. They say the Spring Festival is about telling folks how you feel. And Anne, I feel like I'd just about die if I couldn't make you my wife. You had to go and make a scene, didn't you? Aww. Man, there are so many memories attached to the Spring Festival about people getting together and being in love. That is so sweet, honestly. And I guess it's time to go make one of my own if this uh, rooftop rendezvous is what I think it's going to be. Yo, they even did the fairy lights up here? Let's go. Uh, you said you have some news? I'm leaving. I'm actually leaving Haven Springs. What? Can you believe it? Back on the road again. Fucking finally. Wait, seriously? I'm gonna play music again, Alex. Anywhere I want. God, I forgot how fucking good it feels. Oh. See, I want to be happy for you, but like, I have. Mm, like, it does suck because, like, I feel like Alex and Steph have grown pretty close, mostly because I've, you know, really dedicated my energy to going down the, like, Steph romance path in this story. So. Uh, man. I don't know what to say. I want to be supportive, but... Hey. Hey. Come on. No time to be sad. We've got work to do. I need a new destination. <sighs> You're my good luck charm. You have shit taste in good luck charms. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Pick one. Oh god, do I actually have to pick? Shit. Um, let's see. Berlin. I'm assuming that's Berlin, Germany. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> Which you were here, Berlin, or middle of the ocean? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, Steph was a witch during the LARP. Salem, Halloween capital of the world, or so they say. <laughs> Who do I hang out with? Witches? You join a coven. A lesbian coven. Is there any other kind? <laughs> you hang out in graveyards and perform rituals to speak to the dead. None that sounds like a rad time. Work, but that's okay, because I get a load of old tombstone rubbings to decorate my apartment with. Yo, true. That sounds like a pretty spectacular plan. Great. Then come with me. Do I get to choose this? To Salem? Sure, why not? Doesn't have to be our first stop, but one day. I still have friends in Seattle who book shows. Maybe we start there, or I don't know, Kansas City, Vegas, wherever we want. Look, I don't want to pressure you. 
but I've seen you give so much of yourself to make sure other people get what they need. And I guess I wonder if you've thought about what you need. She's a step with a soul read. I mean, obviously, I like you a lot, Alex. You mean the fucking world to me. Is what I'm gonna pick too obvious? Yes. Am I gonna go with a completely obvious choice here? Also, yes! Oh. Kiss me. Kiss me. Kiss me. Kiss me. Oh. Hey! It's canon! It is so canon! I fucking love that. Yo! Dude, I am unreasonably happy about this. <laughs> you don't have to decide anything now, okay? <laughs> Just think about it. I will. Thank you. I'm gonna head back down. Find me later. Absolutely. Dude, I'm so fucking happy right now. I'm so happy right now. Ugh, my fucking god. Like, I was so worried I- I was so worried I blew it! At the end of episode 3. Thank fuck I didn't. Hey, Gabe. Can I tell you something? Oh boy. I think I solved it. Why you died? Who's responsible? Isn't that crazy? I'm out of threads to pull. Which is terrifying. Because on the other side of all this, after Typhon, after you, there's just... normal life. I was kind of counting on you to show me how to do that. But I think I can figure it out. Hell yeah. I just wish you were here to see it. I totally believe in you. Oh, you got a, you got a real good support system around here to oh, help you do um, that. Also, I kissed Steph. Yeah, you did. That happened. And that was pretty cool. Dude, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm still so happy about that, man. Ah, uh, Steph is so cool. And I'm, I'm glad to see Alex happy and fuck, dude. <sighs> I do wish Gabe was here to see this, but... The best we could do now is live on for him, I guess. And shove the boot of justice right up Typhon's ass. That would also help, too. USB drive? I do. It's all here. Gabe's call, their secret plan, the cover up. Oh, he hasn't looked into it. You need to come with me to the station. Alex? Don't make this hard. Oh my fucking god, you gotta be kidding me. 
I fucking knew it. I knew it that the fucking cop was not trustworthy. God damn it. <laughs> See, as if it wasn't going to fucking end up where the cop was in Typhon's back pocket, you know? As if that wasn't going to be the case eventually, right? Probably isn't how you pictured your first spring festival, huh? Oh, cut Not the small time. talk, Pike. Cut the small talk. What are you Coffee? trying to get me in for? I'm all right. Thanks, though. Good. Because we're uh, actually out. Ah, ha ha ha. Oh, this is such good banter. Pike, why am I here? Valid question. The long and short of it is, Diane is charging you with stealing her USB drive. How does she even know I had it? What the hell are you talking about? Did you steal this USB drive or not? At least tell me you looked at it. I can't. I'm sorry. Can't or won't. What do you mean? Why not? Well, one, I would need a warrant. And two, the case is closed. Based the on what? Oh, the order came I down. I, could, but, you know, I wonder from who. Sorry, Alex. The order came down today from who? High up. Bosses, bosses, boss. Maybe one Lena Clark. To know. <laughs> Look, what happened to my brother wasn't an accident. It was criminal. The files on that drive prove it. That could be true. But let's say it is. It is. The issue is, you stole Typhon's property. I can't work with that. I'm the main character. Just finagle some shit. I just handed you a smoking gun. It shouldn't matter how I got it. Maybe not. But it does. Oh, for fuck's Alex, sake. You're not thinking about this clearly. Seems pretty clear to me. Diane wants to charge you with computer fraud. That's a federal crime, Alex. Five to ten, easy. Fuck off, dude. You know what? Fuck Diane. This isn't justice. This is a joke. It's not that bad. Hey, I talked to her. And despite how angry she is at everything you did, she's willing to let it go. Oh, is she? How, how magnanimous of her. If you agree to drop everything, Typhon won't press any charges. <sighs> oh, really? Why the deal? Why would she do that? She just wants this whole thing to go away. Uh-huh. I wonder so why. Fuck that. I'm not signing anything. Alex. No. Typhon buried something in the mountains. Something so massive they ignored Gabe's call and set off the blast just to cover it up. Don't you want to know what it is? What do you mean, cover it up? Come on, get with the program the here. Blast, unannounced set off at the exact same time at the old mining site. Which you would know if you looked at the USB All stick, you prick! Just a few weeks before inspections were set to begin. Uh-huh. Come on, Pike. It's all right here. Come on, Pike. One plus one equals two. 
Shouldn't be that hard. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Oh, doesn't Alex, it? Please, just sign the form, and we can both go back to the party. No. Alex, this is not an offer that you can choose. I said no. No is not an option. Oh, he's got fears. Oh, I really hope this isn't. I really hope this isn't well, just based on his crush on Diane. There's gotta be something more to it than that. See for yourself. Oh Shit. boy. What could be in that envelope? Alex, please. I don't want you to get hurt. Then help me, damn it. Ooh, boy. A deal. Just like they offered Charlotte. Fuck me. Should at least see what I'm not signing. Release and waiver agreements. Type in Mining Company, hereby referred to as the releaser, agrees to drop all charges against Alexandra Chen, hereby referred to as the releasee. Charges to be dropped. One, one. Federal count computer fraud. One, one. Count theft. In exchange, the release must cease and desist all efforts to defame, surveil, or otherwise harm the releaser. Fuck that noise. Now what is in the envelope? A threat evaluation! Alexandra Chen, anti-Typhon segment, brother Gabriel Chen died in an accident related to Typhon Mining Blast. Intel shows subjects as a high level of determination and, and uh, efficacy. Negative effect affectation, excuse me, has persisted beyond predica uh, predicted, Daniel, words, predicted bereavement period. Suspect also appears to have possession of confidential data and information. Now, I'm wondering, oh, you know what? Yep, because she was being surveyed probably by the same guy that they had tail Mac. Because they saw me talking to Mac and therefore I became a person of interest. Yep. There's the fucking file from the private investigation person. Began following subject after meeting with Mac Loudon. Subject Mac with, uh, met with man identifying as Ryan Lucan. Little else of note. Subject spent three hours in apartment. Wi-Fi screen monitoring level reveals searches in the Typhus history and legal litigation records. Okay, you're looking into my fucking screen monitoring. That's weird. Subject men spoke with client in the Black Lantern. Appears subject has... Uh, appear subject has stolen object from client. So, yeah, this was definitely Diane having the guy tail me. Oh, good! And a threat evaluation on Ryan. Close friend Gabriel Chen died in an accident. Assisting Alexandra Chen with her efforts against Typhon. Involved in an extremely distraught over accident. Subject has high level of knowledge of both geography and residents of Haven. Oh, God. Steph's a fucking target now, too. Close friend Gabriel Chen died in an accident related uh, to death, assisting in her efforts, has proven resourceful and dangerous. Threat priority two. Is this a threat? What did you expect? Huh? The Typhon, a global organization with billions in revenue, an army of lawyers, and who knows how many politicians in their pockets would just what, throw up their hands and say, you got us. I thought I could get justice for Gabe. Yeah, well, Typhon has their own idea of justice. There's more to this thing you're telling me as it relates to you, Pike. Believe me, I want nothing more than to make these fuckers pay. Then help me! I've learned the hard way that it's not possible. They're too big. Too connected, too ruthless. Yeah, but see, the problem is you're not the main character. I am! I have the hey, plot armor! If you want, call me a coward. But I don't want to lose you like we lost Gabe. Pike is terrified of Typhon. I bet if I took his fear away... But it's not just about me. Steph and Ryan are in danger, too. Fuck. 
I want to hurt Typhon so bad, but can I really put their lives at risk along with mine? Yep, and here's the big choice. God damn it! Mm. See, I'm still... I'm still dealing with the consequences of, you know... I'm still trying to figure out the consequences of taking Charlotte's anger... You know? And I don't know... I don't know what's going to happen to her. Like, I really, really, really hope something really bad doesn't happen to Charlotte. You know? And, oh God, what does taking Pike's fear away from him mean for him? Like, there's obviously all the stuff with how this is going to affect my struggle with Typhon. But, like, how is this going to affect him? Like, okay, yeah, he's a cop. Which, you know, fuck him for that. But, like, he's obviously someone that wants, in his heart of hearts, to not see Typhon get away with what they're trying to get away with. And they clearly have some kind of hold over him. Which is why, as we saw in that, um, that collection of files that Diane has, that he wouldn't really go to task and, you know, um really conflict with Typhon over anything more than, like, small, uh, small violations, they clearly have some kind of hold over him, as they probably would with a lot of people in this town. But, like... Ah, uh, the other thing is, like... Hmm... I, I feel like Ryan and Steph helping me in the investigation is going to put them in risk anyway. They're not just going to give up. They're not going to just give up and be like, oh, you know, I guess, you know, we're just going to give up on this now. Especially not this deep into it. Especially not with how much Gabe meant to both of them and how much they know Gabe means to me. And plus, you know, Steph, of all people, would absolutely not want to kowtow to a fucking billionaire corporation and just say, well, I guess we'll just stop snooping now. No, of course not. She'd burn the fucking headquarters down. Are you kidding me? She'd set the place on fire and then fucking write a song about it. You know she would. And also, how could I how could I tell Charlotte? How could I tell Charlotte to not sign the affidavit, and then not take that advice for myself for basically the same reason? Because Typhon wants to shut me up because they know I have something that I could use against them to hurt their profit margin and their reputation and their hold on this town and perhaps other places if they are well and truly implicated in the death of Gabe Chen because of their cover-up of Project Rhea. How can I tell Charlotte not to sign an affidavit when she was going to get a big lump sum of money and then, you know, sign it for myself when it doesn't even seem like... Like, it doesn't even seem like I get the same fucking scummy benefit out of it, of the money. Not that that would make me much more willing, but... Like, how can I tell Charlotte not to take an even better deal than the one I would be taking, which is basically just, you get to continue existing, you know? And also, knowing I have someone on my side who wants to take Typhon down, and maybe ridding him of his fear of Typhon would help him get past whatever hold they have on him? Let's do it. Do you want to risk your life over this? Gabe, Mac, Alex, who's next? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Just keep your head down, dummy. You're just a shit heel. Typhon's major league. Typhon doesn't lose. Typhon disappears, people. Let them get killed, not you. 
Jeez. I know you're afraid. I am too. I know you think that Typhon is too big, too invincible, but they're not. I will bring them down. I just need your help. Come on, Pike. I literally just took your fear away. If not for me, then for Gabe. Come on, man. Please. Come on, man. I literally just took your fear of Typhon away. I'll think about it. It's still Thank not you. a... It's still not a no. Get the hell out of here. Really? Oh, Alex. I hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Be careful. Hey, listen. Main character, plot armor. It's fine. All right? Oh, I hope he doesn't change his mind. I mean, I, just because I took his fear doesn't mean he's guaranteed to help. Oh, I hope that doesn't bite me in the ass. That should be the tagline for this whole fucking series. Hey, make a major decision. Better hope it doesn't bite you in the ass. That doesn't sound good. Come see me when you get the chance. That sure sounds like a we need to talk kind of note. Those pictures. How long have they been watching us? And what will they oh, do? Oh god. Oh, uh, that's Pike's fear acting up. Get together, Alex. Get it together. You're the main character. You're the main character. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You, are you good? Are you good? Oh, God. You know what else I just thought of? I have no idea what to do next. Maybe talking to Jed will help me feel better. You know, I just thought of something. First, I need to get out of this dress. What is going to happen now that I have absorbed two different people's emotions? And what happens if I, um... Jesus, my phone is fucking firing off. What is going on? Time for a change of clothes. I'm working on it. I'm just trying to think, like, what's going to happen when, like, you know, Pike's fear clashes with Charlotte's anger? Because I'm sure that's still swimming around in there. Ooh, I'm afraid to think of that end result. And speaking of those strong emotions, looks like we got a few new journal entries. So, uh, let's take a good look at those. Ducky. Sadness. I think sometimes we make reserve space in our heads for particular people. The important ones, anyway. They become part of us. So permanent and immutable that eventually you can't imagine what it would even mean to be who you are without them. And then, one day, they're gone. And all that's left is the space you cleared for them in your head. And you're not sure how to so much as breathe anymore. Maybe that's what it means to be haunted. Ducky doesn't know how to be Ducky without tabs. Part of him feels like he spent the years since her death doing an impression, his best recollection of who he used to be when she was still here. I think when we danced, he remembered a little of who that person was. I think he could see a little of what Tab saw in him. Aw. 
hoping I see you at the bottom when I finally drain the glass. I've outlasted this entire damn town. I want to see you dance again at last. Steph. Joy. Steph is good at hiding her feelings. Maybe it has something to do with her LARPing? Knowing how to wear a personality like a mask. But tonight I could tell that underneath the genuine excitement was a vein of anxiety. A tiny voice whispering, You have to deal with whatever comes after. She asked me to leave with her. To see the world with her. And all at once it occurred to me that the wide open sky above us would look just a little different from some other rooftop in some other place. And for a second I ached to see it. Little stages and little bars. A whole secret network of strangers waiting to be made less strange if even for a night. Cut the deck. Pick a card. Maybe this is what I need. Someplace new. Follow you. From Salem to the sea. They tore a wall down in Berlin. I could tear a wall down too. What if what I need is you? Pike. Fear. There's a threat that keeps you awake at night. All vigilant and terrified. Then there's the one you don't even know exists. So you sleep just fine. Guess which one is more likely to kill you? I thought I knew what Typhon was, but really I had no idea. Pike knew. And it terrified him. The horror of the witness. The paralyzed audience strapped in and made to watch the same inevitable choreography performed again and again and again. What have you seen, Pike? Before Gabe. Before me. What secrets did you have to keep? And how long did you have to keep them? I thought of Charlotte. Of what I'd done to her anger. What if I took Pike's fear? Swallowed it. Made it mine. Would it do to him what I did to Charlotte? I had to take the risk. Rat girl, keep your head down. The cats always win. Pen and shaking fist. Cross your name off their list. I can't go through this again. Two of your neighbors have changed their relationship status. Josh Hopkins and Julia Crow were now in a relationship. Oh my god, finally. For real, man. Come on, did everyone know but us? Yeah, kinda. It turned out to be a great spring fest after all. Really good to see you out there this year, duck. It's certainly a time for new beginnings. That's a spirit, ducky. What a festival, Haven. We ate, drank, and made merry. We tasted chilies, we rocked out to some music, and enjoyed a lovely spring night in our beautiful town. Thanks for another great year, everyone. Great festival. And thanks to our business partners and everyone who put so much work into making this festival possible. Our pleasure. The smiles and laughter make it all worth it. Best part of the year. Sadly, the spring festival is over, but the fun continues at Avalanche Ice Cream. Share your favorite memory from the festival in the comments and get one scoop on us. Ooh, nice. I like when Josh burned his mouth in the chili. Aw. <laughs> Better get a free scoop on that burn stat. Yeah, please do that. The music, hands down. We love the set too, one free scoop. I finally grew a pair and told a very special girl how special she is. And the scariest part wasn't telling her. It was realizing how dumb I was for waiting this long. Oof. Too real. Damn, I think you deserve two scoops for that one. Hell yeah. Ducky. Hope he's doing okay. Yeah, he seemed like he was having a good time at the festival. Riley probably can't help me hack Typhon. I wish he could. Yeah, you know, let's have a quick moment of zen here. Gather some thoughts. I mean, we did just have to experience Pike's fear, which was probably a lot. I had no idea what I was getting into, did I? Yeah, most main characters really don't. Sharing secrets. Evil mining corporations. Kissing punk rock girls Death on rooftops. Threats. Also that. Big oof. I didn't realize how awful it would all be. There's been good things too. It's been a mixed bag. I put 
put my friend's lives in danger. Mm. For what? Was it all for nothing? It would have been all for nothing if you I'm signed that sure. affidavit. So which I didn't be. do. Here it can't all be for nothing. It's only episode four. There's still one episode left. Uh, okay. And this one's not even over yet. I'm gonna hey, you don't know how this is all going to end, all right? We're not even through this episode yet. Although I am still worried about the fact that Jed wants to talk. Looks like I'm on my own now. I don't want to drag Ryan and Steph in any deeper. Oh, as if Ryan and Steph would actually let me do this on my own. As if they would let me. Yep. The tables seem to have turned, all right. I think I'm all played out for tonight. Ah. Yo, know, that's fair. You did just have a big performance with Steph. I, I get that. Maybe I'll just bike out to the mine, dig up some answers myself. Yeah, no, maybe not. Might end up busting the other wheel. Can't wait to have nightmares tonight. Boy, howdy. Might as well go talk to Jed now. Ooh, that's a sweet logo. Haven Springs Saber Tubes. Okay. I feel a bit better. I guess I can go see the boss man now. A bit better? Um, yeah, I'm gonna need you to start feeling a lot better because I feel like this is about to get worse. I mean, if this is like the original Life is Strange or Before the Storm, the penultimate episode is where shit starts really going off the rails. I'm just saying. Hey, Jed. How's it going? Hey, Jed. There she is. Have a seat. Something Alex, you're fired. Me. You've had a more it's exciting kidding. spring festival than you planned for. Hey, yeah, you know, kiss the cute girl like on the rooftop. Me. Oh boy. And let you go, apparently. Then there's that business with Ryan and Steph earlier today. I wasn't sure why it took all three of you to work out Diane's lunch order. Yeah, I guess that wasn't exactly subtle, was it? I know you're used to looking out for yourself. Gabe was like that. But Haven's a community. We help each other. I want to help you. But first, you have to let me know what's going on. Oh, you know, just trying to take down a multi-billion dollar corporation. Yeah, I got to lose. Hmm. For some reason, I just don't know if I like the idea of taking a shot right now. Just call me crazy, right? But... I just... I, I think I still am kind of on the train of thought of Jed maybe being not quite on the up and up now. Just, um... Mm, I don't want to assume that maybe he, you know did some suspicious to the drink but I don't know Typhon killed Gabe I have proof well Pike has the proof but you know what I proof? found the proof I stole it from Diane emails and documents proving there was a second explosion the night Gabe died to cover something up Jed some secret they buried. I don't know what it is. I don't even know what to do next. But I'm not giving up. Not ever. Come on, Jed, say something. Being a little too quiet, my man. I know what they're hiding. Oh? Oh. What 
Wait. You're telling me you knew that Typhon's crooked? This whole time? Typhon's the devil that runs this town. I've been carrying their secrets for far too long. Well, spill it, man. I, I got know, open ears. In the mountains. Tell me. What? I'll what is it? Better. I'll show you. Oh. Oh, don't tell me that's where we leave it. Don't tell me that's where we leave it. Please don't tell me that's where we leave it. Okay, good. There is a little bit more to this. There, up ahead. Where are we? I still... I'm still a little suspicious of Jed, not gonna lie. For Ethan. Five clicks that way is town. What is this thing? Ventilation shaft. They're scattered everywhere. Over the years, mines grow into mines, creating a labyrinth under Haven. What you're searching for is down below. Oh, I really don't like the fucking music playing right now, man. This seems really bad. Oh, I swear to God, if you push me in this hole, Jed. Oh, no. Why are you sad? Oh, no. No, Jed. No. 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 I'm sorry, kid. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Okay. Just put the gun down. I tried to talk you out of it. Scare you off. I was sure those pictures of Ryan and Steph would do the trick. But you were relentless. Won't leave damn well enough alone. I am the main character. What do you want from me, man? Twelve years ago, I made a mistake. The kind of thing that you you can't undo. Oh. But Typhon made me a deal. A way to save my town. Give my boy a normal life. I'm sorry? I never wanted Gabe to get hurt. Go to hell. Jesus! Okay, so I'm dead, right? Like, literally, the only way I survived this is because I'm the main character and I have super plot armor, right? Any other character would be dead. Fucking hell! Man. Of course. Of course it's a cliffhanger. Of course it's a clip. I fucking called it, too. Not only was that... Not only that there was gonna be... Some big fucking off the rails turn in the penultimate episode, like there is in the other fucking games. But, like, man, I really didn't want to be right about Jed being a twist villain. Fuck. It's always the fucking trusted authority figure, man. It's always the guy that you trust the most. And you know it, you know it has something to do with him. In uh, the mine in 2008, he even alluded to it. 12 years ago, he made a mistake, something you can't undo. It has something to do with what he did in the mines. It has something to do with that. There's no way that he would be alluding specifically to about that same time frame if it didn't have something directly to do with that. There's no way that he would allude to that if it wasn't relevant to that. God, right, uh, I guess we just look over the fucking world stats then. Um, okay, so pretty big majority of Pike letting Alex go after she removed his fear. Okay, kind of expected that. 
Oh, wow. Two thirds of people giving their Steph to Rose or giving their Rose to Steph. What are words? <laughs> um, like, I'm still happy about that, but I don't know if we're still going to be able to make a future with Steph here. Um, especially after Jed just kind of fucking shot me. Still don't know how I'm going to survive that. 70% had a moment by the bonfire. Oh, wow. I was in the vast minority of taking a moment to reflect before talking to Jed. What right, about this stuff? It was pretty split in the fucking... Um, it was pretty split in the postcards, but I guess some people didn't meet Alex on the roof or didn't meet Steph on the rooftop. A two thirds, two thirds kissing Steph. Nice. Wow, seventy one percent. Ryan and Alex muse about her working in the rec in the record store. I could have gotten a job in the record store. What? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Oh, you know what? You know what? Uh, you know what I'm willing to bet? I'm willing to bet that if you had touched the drum kit in episode one, something would have happened to where it would have gotten broken. And then Alex would have offered to repay it by working at the store. I see. I think I, I, think I get that. Charlotte felt weirdly detached at the festival. Oh, this is a 50-50 split. Oh, fuck. Okay, so Charlotte wouldn't have been dead at the festival. I mean, I guess that's good. Ooh, that's just making me... That's just making me feel worse about taking her anger now, because, like... I still don't know how this is going to affect her in the long run, man. Oh, wow, most people didn't even find Riley at the bus stop. Huh. Really, Riley uh, Riley could have already decided not to go to school. Really? Huh. That was a possibility? Well, I guess, I guess that kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with that one possibility that I didn't know about of, like, uh, Riley already having known about the dementia. So... You know, I guess. Would she even have been at the bus stop then, or would she, or would she been, uh, would she have been somewhere else then? I wonder. Really, I was, I was in the vast minority of getting Ducky to dance with Alex. Really, nobody thought, nobody thought to just dick around town just to see if they could, and then go to the Black Lantern and talk to Ducky. Nobody thought to do that. Really. Huh. I wonder if it would have even been a possibility if, um, just because you have to go to the Black Lantern at some point to meet with either Steph or Ryan at the rooftop, I assume. I assume that's a mandatory thing. At some juncture. Um. But, like, at that point, could you have seen Ducky? If he wasn't already at the festival? I wonder. Oh, vast majority of people helping the bean counter win. That was in the slight minority with the diner buyer guy. Also in the slight minority of helping the guy and the gal friends get together, apparently. A couple of these are really more split than I thought. Well, that was certainly an episode, wasn't it? Fuck. Um, yeah, we had another opportunity to take away someone's emotions, which I'm still not sure how that's going to affect things. And I'm still worried about how the last time is affecting Charlotte in the long run, let alone what it's going to do to Pike. Typhon's well on my ass now. Jed is afraid of Typhon's power, especially considering they made some kind of deal because of something he apparently did back around the time of the original mind collapse. And we got to kiss Steph, which to me, to me personally, peak of this game so far was getting to romance Steph. Like Steph is Steph is so cool. Honestly, I'm really glad that 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 at least happened. I really do hope that, like, I do hope that we get to have some kind of happy ending with Steph, where we just, you know, 
scour the world and play little dive bars here and there and Ooh, I wonder if we could reunite with Izzy at some point. You know, get the get the whole of drugstore makeup together. I don't know. Pfft. Clearly, we gotta focus on the task at hand here, Daniel. Episode 5. Have to, you know, get out of the mine first. That might help. We kinda got shot and left in a giant ventilation shaft. So, uh, that might be an issue to deal with. But, anyway. Um, yeah, that's episode 4 in the books. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more in the future. Leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite part was. You know, whether you think I was crazy for not romancing Ryan instead, or, you know, um, even if you just want to say hi, that'd be cool too. Or just to tell me whether or not you've drank water today, and then I'll be really passive-aggressive in telling you to drink water. And thank you once again to Square Enix and Rainmaker GG for providing the code for this game. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much for that. And I guess that's it for now. I'll see you in episode 5. Take care, everybody. See you in the next video, friendos.